Police officers face high-stress situations daily, but sometimes emotions boil over. Get out of the truck right now. There's no reason to be. You Get did this to my son. Get out of the truck. No! We'll explore the cases where cops cross the line, erupting in anger or violence. Okay. Give me some space, dude. Go ahead, turn. Give me some space, Put your dude. Hand behind your back. No, give me some. Ow! Oh! These incidents, often caught on camera, led to swift action. Did you not see this bright yellow vest standing in the middle of the street? No, I did. I thought you were leaving. No, before. this means stop. I... This means stop. Their badges ripped away in the aftermath of losing control, planting false evidence. The footage starring former Deputy Zachary Webster of the Jackson County Sheriff's Department in Florida serves as a warning advising viewers never to agree to searches and seizures, even if they are confident in their innocence. It uncovers the shortcomings of our system, where officers tamper with evidence and unjustly detain people. It highlights a system where officers profit from destroying the lives of the innocent. On a seemingly routine day, a traffic stop by Deputy Westwood of the Jackson County Sheriff's Office led to a startling revelation. The pretext for the stop was a malfunctioning brake light. The encounter initially appeared ordinary, with Deputy Westwood engaging the driver in casual conversation while issuing the warning. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Should I turn in here to get off? You're fine. Uh, You're fine. Uh, Deputy uh, Westwood, uh, Jackson County Sheriff's uh, Office. Uh, reason for my stop is um, your brake lights. Yes, sir. They work one minute, and the next minute they don't work, and then a few seconds later they just flash. Okay, I think so. It's probably because the rain. Okay, that's fine. You got your driver's license yes, on you, ma'am. I just got tickets the other day. I'll be glad to show you. Oh, did you? you. <laughs> nah, you're fine. All right, thank you. I'll be right there. Uh, my truck may or may not start. When I turn it off, you may have to push me off, so I'm going to go ahead and see. Okay. Uh, do you need to turn it off? Do you have to turn it off? It'd be probably be better. Okay. I'm have a hard time with it as it is. Okay, I'll tell you what. If can we I can... answer my phone? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can answer your phone. I'm just trying to think what's going to be best for... Uh, what is, I mean, it... What is that right there? What is what? That right there. What is what? This? That straw right there. This is not a straw. It's an ink pen. Oh, okay. It's okay. an ink pen. It, it was connected. It looked like it was no connected straw. to that arc. However, suspicions arose when Deputy Westwood requested consent to search the vehicle, bypassing the standard procedure of a canine search. And she's going to walk around the car, okay? But instead of doing that, would you consent to a search of your vehicle? No, You're fine with that? Okay. <laughs> Art, you mind stepping out and just hanging out with this deputy right back here? No, I don't. I'm scared of being in this traffic. No, I, Deputy Hay-K will take care of you. Can I get take my phone? Yeah, take your phone. Oh. I don't care. That's fine. Come on. Hi. How are you? I'm tired. Yeah, me too. 25, 24, 24, Deputy Hay-K will make sure you don't get run over, okay? I have faith that he will take care of If I do, it's all on y'all. You ain't gonna get rid of it. If you want, just sit right here. Right here, right here. The situation escalated when Deputy Westwood, captured on body cam footage, was seen manipulating evidence. He planted narcotics in the vehicle, later using this fabricated evidence to charge the driver with drug possession. His actions constituted official misconduct, as he knowingly employed false evidence to incriminate an innocent individual. During questioning, Deputy Westwood lied during his trial and attempted to justify his actions, claiming he mistook the baggie for potential evidence. However, subsequent investigations revealed the bag of methamphetamine was found elsewhere. When you were approaching the vehicle to search it, yes. tell, me, tell us what you did. In the void space, there was a baggie of some sort. I didn't know at the time if it was of evidentiary value or not. It didn't appear as if it had narcotics in it. It didn't appear as if it had anything that may have been of value, but nonetheless, I wanted to try to preserve it, so I grabbed it. And whenever I entered the vehicle, it was in my left hand. But I wanted to be able to still use my fingers, as you saw, to be able to touch that red cloth sack and open up my gloves. Before I put my gloves on, I move my hand and I place that item in the driver's side floorboard and I continued my search. Undermining his credibility. After searching the car, he showed the woman the drugs and asked what they were. She replied that they didn't belong to her. Oh, Miss Odom. It is yogurt, sir. 
Awesome. I'm a okay. It's how, yogurt. How about this? Though? That is not mine. No, sir. I'm not going to ask you any no, direct, sir. Oh, I'm not going to ask you any direct um, questions. I'm going to read you your rights first, okay? So just hang out with Deputy Hake here. What is it? I have an idea. We're going to test it, though, okay? I don't know. Oh, but... no, Teresa, you're going to jail. Yep. All right. The actions of this police officer were not only dishonest, but also outright criminal. And Teresa's life was irreversibly altered due to Deputy Wester. It wouldn't surprise you if you knew she wasn't the only victim. In fact, Eight prisoners were freed, and over 260 cases were re-examined after he was found guilty of planting evidence. He received a 12-year prison sentence. MHP Traffic Stop The police officers initiate a traffic stop in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. At the beginning of the video, the man can be seen using his camera to record the incident. The cop asked the man for his license and insurance. The man replied that he had them in Bobby's drop saw swagger, and he was working. He wanted to know why he was pulled over before anything else. He asked the cop to explain first before demanding answers. The cop, trying to clarify things, stated that he needed to provide some information first. The man interrupted, asserting that he already knew about the situation with Timmy lying. Yes, sir. Your driver's license proof insurance? What'd I do? I'll get your driver's license and I'll explain it to you. I'm working on it. No, what'd I do first? Uh, why no. you pull me over? Get your driver's license and no, I'll what I put, what do you put me over for? Tell me that first. Sir, let me explain something to you. And what's your, I know, I know, I know the law. No, you have to tell me I'm why you pull me over. I don't, I don't have to tell Bull you. Bull I have driver's I license. I have to identify you first. No, you don't. You have my tag number right, right there. Are you J Troop or K Troop? Who license are you? No, what do you pull me over for first? Sir. You can be difficult. Or I you do can a white. I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just telling difficult. you. I'm not. The man wants to know why he was pulled over. The man insisted he wasn't trying to be difficult, but he wanted to understand why he was stopped. He mentioned something about doing a wide open throttle, indicating his profession as a diagnostic mechanic. He also mentioned his son being pulled over for the same reason. The cop asked about an open carry weapon incident involving the man's son. Why did you pull me over? I did a wide open throttle, real quick. I'm a diagnostic mechanic. I'm working on a truck, and I'm heading toward a guy's house to help me with it in Columbia. Let me explain something. I am listening. No, you don't have to explain. That's a cop explaining. No. no. I need to identify who I'm speaking with. I'll explain to you why. I am Robert B. Henschling. My birthday is 622-62. I own this truck, and I have registration and everything. You don't have to know that. Tell me why you pulled me over. He repeatedly questioned why he was being pulled over specifically. The man continued to demand an explanation, stating that the cop could run his tag number for insurance verification. He emphasized that he owned the vehicle and had all the necessary documentation. You know who you are. Identify yourself. You, you do. I own this truck. You can run my tag number. Brand new tag, brand new license. Tell me why. There's my proof of insurance. It has my name on it right there. I don't have to hand you this to, to you. All I have to do is just show you. I'm not trying to be difficult. You are. I'm asserting my right. No, I'm a nice guy. I'm a really nice yeah, guy. Am I not being? You nice are, guy? but I don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to do that. Now, tell me why you put me over. He expressed reluctance to step out of the vehicle, citing safety concerns. The cop insisted that he needed to step out and demanded the man's license. The man eventually handed over his license, reiterating that there was no reason for the cop's actions. Tell me you step out of the no. no. In fact, I'm gonna lock the doors and I'm going up a little bit too. I just need to ask. I'm going to a friend's house in Columbia right now. I did one wide open throttle on my truck. I just took it 1,200 mile round trip. Jamie knows that. I sent him all the information, whatever. You know? I did one wide open throttle. I was not reckless driving. I did one wide open throttle on the truck. I let off. I saw you way back there, sitting back there. I have you on video right there. That's fine. You'll be on video on my video. That's right fine. Here. That's really cool. I appreciate that. I really do. You want to step out of your truck? No, I'm not stepping out. You want to step out of your truck? No. There's no reason to do that so much. There's no reason there's, to step there's out two ways either. This can go. There's no this reason to do that. No, no. no. Either, no. You can either get out of the vehicle or give no. me a license. I can give you my license, but I'm not stepping out of the vehicle. 
give me a license. No. As tensions rose, the police officer ordered the man to exit the truck and forcefully pulled his hair, informing him that he was under arrest. The man objected vehemently, insisting on his innocence and requesting to call Jamie Atkins. Despite the man's protests, the officer continued to demand that he leave the truck with assertive force. No. Get out of car. Get out of truck. Get out of truck right now. There's no reason to be. You Get did this to my son. Get out of truck. No! You're under, no for disorder, you're under arrest for disorderly conduct. I didn't do anything. They need to obey a lawful command. That's Get out of the truck. They want Get out of the truck. Right there. No. 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 Stop it. Get out of the truck. Stop it. Get out of the truck. Get out of the truck. You can call Jamie now. Atkins right now. Get out of the truck. I have my license on. I didn't I have my seatbelt on. I didn't do anything wrong. Get out of the truck. <laughs> No. You call you call R thirty seven right R37. now. Get out of the no. Get out of the no. truck. No. Stop it. The man resisted, expressing fear and discomfort. The situation became chaotic as the cop attempted to apprehend the man, who continued to resist and plead his innocence. Stop Get it. out of the truck. Stop it. Get out of the truck. Stop it. Look. Stop it. Quit reaching, quit reaching. I'm not quit reaching. Quit reaching, quit trying to put the there. Additional officers were called for assistance as the struggle continued. The man insisted that he hadn't done anything wrong and begged for the officers to stop. Stop it! Stop this! De-escalate! Hazeburg. You hear me? Hazeburg, give me some assistance here. I need assistance on traffic stop. Stop it! I haven't done anything wrong! Stop moving. I ain't done anything. Hey, Bert, I need some assistance. <laughs> Highway 98, westbound. I haven't done anything. You got a subject not want to exit the vehicle. <coughs> Stop it. Get out of the truck. Okay. Now. You saw me. Get out of the truck. You saw me. You saw me. Get out of the truck. You saw me at Rose's Barbecue one I don't time. care. Despite his protests, the man was eventually subdued and handcuffed. He complained about difficulty breathing, prompting the cop to assure him that he was breathing and talking. The man continued to plead his innocence and asked why he was being arrested, but the cop remained firm. Does he got a gun? I got one on let me go! I can't breathe! Well, you got to I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Let me up! Let me up! Let me up! Let me up, please! Let me up! I can't breathe! I have asthma! I have asthma! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Let me up! I can't breathe, please! All right, let's do it. Let me up! Let me up! All right. Let me up! All right. Let me up! All right, you're going to be all right. No, I'm not. There you are. Let me up! I can't breathe! Let me up! Hold your feet. Let me up! Roll up! Stand up! I can't breathe! You're breathing, you're talking. <laughs> Quit pushing on me. Stand up. I'm not resisting. Right. Stand up. Ugh. You never told me I was under arrest. Yeah, dude, I was under arrest for disorderly conduct. Stand up. Disorderly conduct? Stand up. You were the one that was disorderly. The interaction ended with the man expressing confusion and frustration over the lack of explanation for his arrest. Attempt to enforce policy as law. The arrival of the Hollywood Police Department only intensified the tension instead of calming the situation. A verbal confrontation between the officer and the man ensued, adding to the already tense atmosphere in the heart of Hollywood. What's your name and your badge number? Officer Pence, 3189. Thank you. Hey, what's, what's your name, name and your badge hold number? On, hold on, what's your name, sir? What is your name? What crime do you suspect me committed? The officer sought to ascertain the reasons behind his kicking out from a train. However, his inquiries were met with a steadfast refusal by the man to disclose her name and any pertinent information. Despite the officer's insistence on transparency and accountability, the man was steadfast in her silence, 
invoking Florida Penal Code 901.151 as justification for her reticence. That's for you, which they have the right to do right. about their train. So I don't That's need to. I don't need, need to get my name. I'm trying to talk to you. All right. First of all, what I don't want to talk though. They need your What's identification. Your name no. They put a form. Yes, they do. No, by they law. told me to leave. I left. By law, by I law. left. By law, you can warn me. I need your information to put in my system. Trust no, me. I'm not. What crime do you suspect me of commit? Trespassing. And I'm asking you for your information so I can write into what my crime? system. What crime? Articulate a crime. The train station. Okay, they told me to leave so, and I left. I so what crime did I commit? Absolutely not. 901.151 yeah. 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 stays you different. Give me your name. Florida Penal yeah. Code stays different. I'm asking for your name. Okay. Your name and date of birth, sir. I'm not giving you my name. Amidst the verbal fighting, as the man stood his ground, invoking his rights under the law, tensions reached a boiling point. The man, refusing to succumb to intimidation tactics, adamantly asserted his Fifth Amendment privilege. States that you need to provide First, you need to warn me what you're doing I, now, and would, I'm not on I, it. I, don't, I have nothing to do with Good. That. So I'm not, you can't force I me can to give him my... Hold on, let me talk. You, you can't force me to give my ID without breaking the law. Well, when a police officer asks for identification... That's not what Florida Penal Code 901 stop 151 states. It states suspicion of a crime, about to commit a crime, or have committed a crime. You can pat me, but you can't search me. I do not agree to any illegal searches or seizures. That's fine. They're going to search you down the street. Okay, good. You can hold your phone. Am I being detained? Well, right now, yes, you are. For what crime? Okay. I'm not I'm I'm talking to you. Okay. The exchange between the man and the law enforcement officers underscored a fundamental clash of principles. While the officers sought compliance and cooperation, the man remained resolute in his refusal to provide identifying information without just cause. Citing his rights under Florida Penal Code 901.151, he rebuffed attempts to coerce him into submission. That they want, they want to trespass for you. That's what we're asking. I don't know. I investigate them. I did. I talked to her. But okay. I want your side of the story. Of, I don't have a side. There's two sides of the story, right? I don't have a side. I don't answer questions, buddy. You don't answer questions? No. Okay, but you have to provide ID on the No, I don't. For an investigation, yes, you do. Suspicion of a crime, I'm about to commit a crime, well, I have committed a crime. 901.151. No, I'm an activist. I know and you I know, know I don't have to give you my information. I see. You know I don't have to give you my information. So all that, when a police... Have, first of all, you have your name for the form for the... No, I don't, because, no, they asked me to leave, and I left. I know the law. I'm very, okay. I'm very well versed in the law. Okay. They told me to leave, and I left. Okay. So that's my very warning. Versed. I'm very versed so in the law. They ask you, they want to put you in a system, so when we have to deal with you again, if we do, it's already there, sir. Then that's when you get it. You have to, if I break the law, that's when you get but, it. No, we put it now, so... No, I don't like giving my name to the government for nothing. <laughs> How do you get checks? For pay and stuff like that, I right? said for nothing. Out. For nothing, like for anything, right? So I don't like giving my I don't like giving my information to the government for just randomly. Stop yelling at me. Man's steadfast devotion to his principles of civil liberties and personal autonomy stood in stark contrast to the authoritative demands of law enforcement officers. Despite facing intimidation and coercion, he remained unwavering in his commitment to upholding his rights. Yeah, I can talk freedom of speech. I'm asking you to stop yelling at me. You feel threatened? I kind of do. Okay, then you can go. I, I can't go, honestly. You can go. Believe me, I wish I could. Okay. It would be a resolved issue. Where's the sergeant? I want to talk to the sergeant. Over there. Call the sergeant. He's coming to talk to you. Because right. I'm being illegally detained right now. Are you really? Are you? If you provide your name and your information, you I can don't have to. And you know that. That's why I'm it's not in cuffs. That's why you're not taking That's me to. I'm not giving up my information. It's not my headache, dude. Okay. There, then why are you still I'm here? don't get the information they need. And okay. I'm you in a system myself for contact. And you don't want to do that. No. You want to elevate it to somewhere else. I'm not elevated. You're going to elevate it. You're All you have to do is follow the law. I am following the law. No, you are going to follow 901.151. Follow penal code 901.151. Follow penal code 901.151. Sir. You know what that states, right? What crime have I committed? Well, you were causing a disturbance on the I didn't cause a disturbance. They did. They asked me to leave and I got off. I followed their they rules. Need the information for their reports, sir. Okay, but no, that's not how the law works. Okay. Ultimately, the encounter served as a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between individual rights and law enforcement authority. In a society governed by the rule of law, the activists' refusal to yield to unjust demands embodied a spirit of defiance against overreach and oppression. Officer Hinkle On December 13, 2022, around noon, Officer James Hinkle was assigned to direct traffic at the junction of Thomaston Avenue and Homer Street. This assignment was necessitated by a malfunction in the traffic signal system at that intersection, which caused the lights to flash intermittently. As Officer Hinkle managed the flow of vehicles, one car attempted to pass through the intersection without adhering to his signals. The event took place in a parking lot and was recorded on dashcam footage. 
Officer Hinkle then signaled for the vehicle to stop and lightly tapped its driver's side with his hand. Subsequently, the vehicle complied with his instructions and pulled over as directed. Officer Hinkle attempted to stop a vehicle for failing to yield to him while he was directing traffic. Despite his clear commands to pull over, the driver initially fails to comply. Pull over now! No, pull over, goddammit! I'm not repeating myself! Get out of the roadway and pull over! Turn the car off. Officer Hinkle approaches her aggressively, demanding her license and registration. He berates her for nearly running him over, despite wearing a bright yellow vest and signaling for her to stop. Throughout the interaction, Officer Hinkle displays a lack of professionalism and fails to de-escalate the situation. License and registrations now. Did you not see this bright yellow vest standing in the middle of the street? No, I did. I thought you were leaving. No, before. this means lying. stop. I, this means stop. I didn't see that until I was already past. And then you still I, drove by me. I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't license and registration me. now. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. Give me a second, okay? No, license and registration I, okay, now. Okay, okay, okay. You almost ran over an officer standing I'm in the sorry. middle of the street. I, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize what was going on. That was very confusing. It's a bright yellow jacket standing in the middle of the street. What don't you understand? Well, no, they weren't. You were the only vehicle coming from that way. You almost ran me over in the middle of the street. During questioning, she maintained that she did not see Officer Hinkle until it was too late to stop. She explained that she was on her way to Target for a pickup order and was unaware of the officer's presence until he was directly in front of her vehicle. Leave your purse in the car. Where do you work? I work for a clothing company in California. What are you doing here today? Going to Target. You're going to Target. Yeah, to do a pickup. What is such an important factor that me standing in the middle of the street, Sir, I stopping swear. you, and you try to run me over? Sir, I swear. And I then you looked at me, you try. waved at me, did, and I, then you kept going anyway. I, I swear, I was not trying to run you over. I thought you were. The cars were going. I'm telling you to stop in the middle of the street, and hand. you wave at me I, and keep going. I. I saw your hand before, and I, it was too late to stop. And no, it wasn't. You were doing 10 I'm miles sorry. an hour, and you still drove by me. I'm sorry. You didn't even sir. attempt to stop your car. Sir. You're lucky you're not in handcuffs right this second. I'm very sorry, sir. I really Explain to my sorry. kids why, why they don't have a dad sir. a week before Christmas, because you're trying to run somebody over. Sir, I promise you. You see the bright lights flashing in the middle of the street? That means you just caution there's a cop out there. I got kids at home, and you almost ran me over a week before Christmas. Officer Hinkle's response is confrontational and accusatory, despite her attempts to cooperate. He repeatedly admonishes her for her reckless driving and implies that her actions could have resulted in serious injury, or even death. However, his own conduct during the incident raises serious concerns about his suitability as a law enforcement officer. That's a cop car standing in the middle of the street flashing lights! I promise I was not... No, it's not an accident. You're just being irresponsible. Street. And then waves at me and still tries to drive by me. Run her, police, and make sure she's valid. What is it, Kate? I can't believe you. A week before Christmas, I almost get ran over. Furthermore, Officer Hinkle's disregard for proper protocol is evident throughout the encounter. He fails to maintain composure and resorts to aggressive behavior, even after she complies with his instructions. <clears throat> Anytime you see flashing red and blue lights, in the middle of the street, it means there's cops present. What should I say? No, stop talking, stop talking. And it means you need to pay attention because there's gonna be police officers who are out and about, okay? This bright yellow vest, it's very, very bright. It's neon yellow because it stands out, okay? 
I'm standing in the middle of the street telling you to stop. That means stop. I'm not waving hi, Merry Christmas. This means stop. Listen, this means stop, okay? When you see me do this and try to get your attention and stop you again, it doesn't mean wave back to me and keep driving by me. It doesn't mean that. I'm not waving Merry Christmas. Keep driving. Stop, stop. I'm sorry. Then what were you doing in your vehicle? I was paying attention to the cars in front of me. There were no cars in front of you. There were zero cars in front of you. You were the only vehicle traveling on that road for 500 feet. Officer Hinkle's encounter with the driver sparked an internal affairs probe into his conduct. He was placed on paid leave during the inquiry. Subsequently, on January 9, 2023, he was terminated due to policy violations. Serving seven years at Waterbury PD, he was assigned to patrol. Chief Spaniolo deemed his behavior unacceptable, leading to dismissal. Assaulted for filming. On September 9, 2022, Joshua Roberts, a First Amendment auditor and owner of the Pepperoni Audits YouTube channel, was filming outside Dove Technologies in Florence, South Carolina. Two workers approached him while he continued filming. Mr. Roberts explains to the workers that he's on an easement, not private property, as the utility poles belong to the city. However, GIS data shows he's on public property. It's crucial to understand that utility poles alone don't indicate public access. The government may have easements allowing poles on private property without changing its ownership status. Thus, utility pole locations aren't reliable indicators of public property. What was that? I can't hear you. You don't have my signed authorization to have my face on that camera. Turn it off. Can I have your signed authorization? This guy's coming up aggressive, everyone. Can I help you? No, can we help? Can you help us? Yo, get away from me, buddy. No, no, dude. Who are the you? Away from me, dude. Why are, why are you here? Back the Why are you here? I suggest you leave me alone. Uh, you're on private property. Uh, I suggest you do something about that then and get back inside. Ooh. Really? Yeah, really. You like going around people like this? You know you think what? that's fun? Don't, don't touch my buddy. Oh, go ahead. Oh, touch. so. Do it. Do it. Uh, what, what, touch what? it. That's on camera. What, what are back we doing? the f What are we doing here? Back the f off, buddy. You touch the You get tased. Get the f back inside. Yeah. Mr. Roberts claims that one worker assaulted him by grabbing his camera and pushing him. He asserts he pulled out his taser in self-defense to protect himself and his property. According to South Carolina law, assault and battery don't require physical injury. Any rude or angry touching can constitute an assault. Also, damaging personal property requires a willful and malicious mental state, which could be argued in this case. While it's unclear if the camera was damaged, Mr. Roberts continued filming after the incident. Why did he come up and grab me? You back off. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, buddy. Get that thing out of my face. No, you f***ing come up to me, get in my face, right, I'll do something, call, buddy. Call, call, get inside. I'll call 911. Call, get call, inside. Call the sheriff's department. Yeah. Whoa, dude. Whoa, dude, you just come up and grab people? The f*** is and wrong with you? you? Your homie did. Don't hate my homie. This is, this is private property. You say you're filming. This is an easement. I'm not on your property, you see that? That belongs to the city. And why, why are you here? Either? Two deputies from the Florence County Sheriff's Office responded to the worker's call. What's going on, bud? Oh, nothing, just getting uh, assaulted out here, that's about it. Getting assaulted? Yeah, by one of their workers. What, what happened? I was just out here taking some pictures and one of the guys came out here saying he didn't want to be filmed and he ran up to me, started circling me, grabbed my camera, started pushing up on me. And it's all videotaped. You have it on video? Oh, it's all recorded. <laughs> because I do want to press charges on him. Was there something involved in the taser? Oh, I pulled it out in self-defense. Okay. When you come out at me like that and you're about to destroy my stuff and put, do bodily harm to me, you're damn right I'm going to pull a taser on someone. During their investigation, one deputy warned Mr. Roberts that if he yelled at the workers across the parking lot, he could be arrested for breach of peace in South Carolina. While breach of peace encompasses various disruptive behaviors, it's not criminal to express unpopular views peacefully. Despite using profanity in other interactions, Mr. Roberts did not use it when shouting across the parking lot. His speech, even if profane, likely wouldn't incite violence, thus protected by the First Amendment. All right, handle this. Don't, don't yell. Just, 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 just calls him to get up. Is it free speech? Am I allowed to say stuff? 
Well, you have a freedom of speech, but there's also something called breach of peace. Okay, I'd like to see you try that, buddy. Those people put hands on me. I'm the victim. So you want you want to turn it around on me? I'm not turning it around. Please do so. What I'm telling you is... You guys are known to be the biggest pieces of okay. in, in South Carolina. Okay. What did I do wrong? Are well, you going to let me talk? Go on ahead. What I was saying is, I don't need you yelling while I'm trying to talk to this man, because that's going to cause him to yell, cause a scene. You get mad, he's gonna get mad, then it escalates. Okay. Just talk to this deputy. Let me tell you something. I'm allowed Go to say ahead. whatever the hell I want. If you yell across this parking lot, while you have all these people standing around, that is called breach of peace. You wanna try that, buddy. I will lock you up. For you that, wanna okay? try that. Yes, I will. Sergeant Paul Morrison responds to the scene and approaches Mr. Roberts, who asks him to keep his distance. Sergeant Morrison tackles him to the ground, claiming he's under arrest for resisting. However, Sergeant Morrison didn't inform Mr. Roberts of the arrest, or take actions to indicate it. South Carolina law requires individuals to knowingly and willfully resist arrest by a known law enforcement officer. You go get your car. Oh great, this guy. Here you go, buddy. All right, my name, badge number beside it, and your case number as well. You can get a copy of the report in 35 minutes. Later. Have a good day. Thank you. See how the cop tried to spin in and say I was in their parking lot? How you doing, sir? How you doing, sir? Uh, not too good. Wow, what's going on today, buddy? I had some dude inside. Oh, you're getting really close, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like to get close. I like to talk to people. Can you stop? No, no, sir. So I, I want to talk to you. What's dude, going on, stop, my friend? Stop getting so close to me, dude. What's going on, man? Dude, stop approaching me. Sir, I, I'm allowed to. Off, dude. Okay. Give me some space, dude. Go ahead and turn. Give me some space, dude. Behind your back. No, give me some. Ow! Oh. Oh. Behind your For back. For what? For what? Uh, for you? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Very nice, dude. Very nice. Enjoy the lawsuit. Enjoy paying for my camera too. Absolutely. You getting resisting arrest? Resisting. I'm not moving. Nope. When I went to put my hands on you, you pulled away from me. Yeah, because you have no right to arrest me. Sir, I you're nothing. under arrest. You had the right to attorney you have him or present. You kept approaching me. You Sir, kept... you had the right to attorney have him or present before any questions are asked. You decide any time to exercise these rights and not make any more statements. Do you understand these rights? After Sergeant Morrison arrested Mr. Roberts, he was taken to jail. Mr. Roberts filed a complaint with the Florence County Sheriff's Office, leading to an internal affairs investigation. Records show Sergeant Morrison resigned on September 15, 2022. The sheriff confirmed policy violations and stated the matter was referred to the solicitor's office, though no charges were filed. Mr. Roberts alleged Sergeant Morrison deleted video footage of the encounter, but it was recovered and posted on YouTube. The sheriff's office addressed policy violations, but allowed Sergeant Morrison to resign instead of terminating him. Other deputies received mixed ratings for initially threatening Mr. Roberts, but ultimately affirming his right to film in public. Mr. Roberts received praise for standing up for his rights, but was criticized for his aggressive behavior and mean-spirited comments.